Today, I want to show you how you can run and set up and raid on what is becoming one of my favorite NAS devices out there, the Ugreen DXP4800+. Plus. Now, I've done a review on this device a few days ago, and on that video, I also showed how difficult it could be to install another OS on it. Now, the reason why we had to open the device and remove the NVMe that contained the OS was because I assumed that a lot of you wouldn't want to waste an extra slot with an unused drive. For instance, you might want an extra pool with NVMe or an NVMe cache, but I should have mentioned that it is indeed possible to install another OS without dismantling the entire NAS, and such is the case with Unraid, for example. Now, luckily for us, Unraid runs out of a USB stick, so for those of you that don't want to have to, you know, crowbar into a 500 quid device, this video is for you. So, first, let's go to the Unraid website download the software and create a bootable drive which will also serve as the OS installation. To do this, you simply click on the OS and choose the recommended version which by norm is the latest and select the USB stick where you want to install Unraid. Now you can name it whatever you want and either let the DHCP assign an IP or set one. Now next, let's get our Ugreen DXP4800 Plus ready for Unraid. Okay, you will need to connect the NAS to a monitor and also have a keyboard plugged in. Once that's done, turn on the screen and switch on your NAS. Now we need to access the BIOS and to do that, you know the drill, right? We turn on the computer and I personally just start hitting Control and F12 repeatedly after the power is on. But if you're quick on the trigger, you can just do it when you see the Ugreen logo. Then you select Setup and enter the BIOS. Now on the BIOS, you're gonna have to do two things. If you look in the information screen, you will see the name of the NVMe drive that currently holds the Ugreen OS. Then you need to go to a chipset and disable that drive. The second thing you need to do is disabling Watchdog. Go to the Advanced tab, click on Watchdog and disable it. Otherwise, your OS will just keep rebooting itself like I explained in the previous video. Then you can just save and reset the BIOS. If it worked, once it restarts, it will go straight into the BIOS, bypassing the native OS, which is not even enabled anymore. So now you can insert the USB stick and restart the device again. If all works well, it will boot straight into Unraid. Now we're going to set up Unraid. First, make sure you go to the dashboard and switch off your NAS. Make sure you also disconnect the power supply. I'm loading it with two drives and I'm also loading it with two NVMe 500 gigabyte drives that I will be using as cache. Now we can turn our server back on and log into Unraid. Now if we click on main, we can see in our unassigned devices list the two hard disk drives. And you know, in this case they are from different manufacturers, which is not really a problem with Unraid. Now, just out of curiosity, Unraid 7 now fully supports ZFS, so you could have a whole pool with just SSD in a ZFS pool without any arrays. But we're not doing that today. We are using our HDD drives, which are much cheaper, and we can add new drives whenever we run out of space. So let's first create our Unraid array. Under Array Devices, we select three slots. For our Parity drive, we select this Seagate, and then disk one, we select the Toshiba drive. For the cache, let's create a ZFS pool. Click on add pool, I will leave the name as cache, but I will select two slots and click on add. Then we assign each NVMe drive to the slots we selected and click on cache one. Under file system type, we select ZFS. When dealing with SSD and NVMe, you never ever use arrays and always use ZFS to avoid any kind of trimming issues. I've spoken about this in the past as well. Now, I'm also leaving it as a mirror because I only have two drives, which means if one drive dies um, and, and the data has not yet been persisted to the array, it's still safe. We can now click on start and most likely you will also need to format the drives. So let's just do that. Since we have two drives with two terabytes, it will take around two to three hours to perform a parity sync. But meanwhile, let's proceed and create a user because we will need that in order to mount our drives remotely via SMB. Let's click on users, add a user and create a new user. Now, once the array finishes syncing up, 
uh, with the whole parody thing, we can click on apps and install the plugin. Now in our case right here, it also states that Docker isn't running. So let's enable it by going into settings, Docker, and then enable Docker. Now, if for some reason Docker doesn't start, try restarting the array or even the entire operating system. Now that everything looks ready to rock and roll, let's go and create some shares. So click on add share and then give it a name. And on primary storage, we select cache. And on the secondary storage, we select the array, which means the data will be available in the cache and later on moved on to the array. As you can see right here, where it says mover or mover action. Then we just export this and it should be available for an SMB connection. Then we will add another share called media, which is where I share my movies and photos. And we leave that one in the array because I don't really use those files constantly. Once it's done, we export it also so that we can also mount this share and we're good to go. And by the way, I'm leaving everything as public to make it super simple but feel free to pick whatever mode um, suits you best. Now, we just create a drive in Windows, point to the share that we just previously configured, and we are ready to go. And that's it. You got Unraid kicking, living in your DXP4800+. Plus. And I also did some very quick crystal marks to see if everything checked out, and everything seems to be in good working order. I hope this was useful and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care.